G'day, welcome back to the channel. Now, a bit of an update on what's going on. Still working on this video for the uh, for the media. It's very close. I'm tidying up loose ends, doing some voiceover, that sort of thing. And uh, but I wanted to just give you a sort of a, a, an idea of what's been happening now. <laughs> this whole thing is getting really interesting. Um, the spoofing element of the vulnerability of remote ID is becoming very apparent. Quite a few channels now putting out videos on how to spoof and examples of spoofing and. I've seen some people, a couple of people have called me a terrorist. They've said, you're a terrorist because you're, you're, you're encouraging people to, to spoof and endanger people and, and you are telling them how to do it and you're suggesting that they should do it and, and you're enabling terrorists and, well, yeah, right. Um, I had to point these people to the NIST website uh, that the US government runs, which kind of shows that you cannot be secure by hiding something. You can't hope that bad people never discover a vulnerability. The only way to deal with vulnerabilities is to expose them, make them very public, shine the sunlight on them, and that, for that forces people to fix them. So the NIST website has a list of all the vulnerabilities that people can exploit on the internet to hack into your system or the government system, anybody's system. All those vulnerabilities are listed there. So one could say that if I'm a terrorist, so is the US government because they're inciting people to, to breach the security of computer systems online by listing all the vulnerabilities. How can they do that? That's terrible. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously I don't uh, ascri uh, subscribe to the belief that I'm a terrorist. I'm trying to do my best to to make the world a better place, not a worse place. But as we've seen, spoofing is now a big thing. It is out there. People are going to spoof. It's just going to happen. And I'm starting to wonder, actually, while I've been researching this and working on this video, I've almost come to the conclusion that the FAA have designed remote ID to fail. I think they were kind of peed off with the fact that the Senate ordered them to implement this remote ID system. You know, DHS said to the Senate, we need this. The Senate said, FAA, you must produce this system. And so they grudgingly went out and did it because as somebody quite rightly pointed out, the FAA doesn't want to make work for itself. It doesn't want to have to put down its coffee and its scones and its biscuits to actually do something. They'd rather sit there, sit there and watch YouTube videos like all of us. So why would they go out of their way to do this? Well, because they're directed to, but the, as, I think we all know, when you push a bureaucrat, they'll try and push back. Not, not openly, but there'll be clever, subtle ways they can push back. I'm actually wondering if the FAA didn't design remote ID to fail and one of the key failure modes is spoofing. Why would I say that? Well, I looked at the submissions that were made on the uh, NPRM for remote ID. And here's an example from the website. Look at how many times the word spoofing is used in those submissions. These are people saying there is a problem with the remote ID There's you proposed it and that is spoofing. Bad actors can spoof remote ID. All those comments saying, you know, this is a problem, this is a problem. Yet in the final rule, in the noted final rule from the F FAA, spoofing is only mentioned once and it's kind of dismissed. No, it's not a problem. <laughs> so they cannot not have known that spoofing was going to be a really big problem, yet they just let it slide through. They didn't say the standard must have cryptographic signing to ensure the authenticity of the data that's being received. No, 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 something as simple as that was left out. Why would you leave that out? Unless you were actually trying to scuttle the whole idea yourself, kind of push back against the politicians and bureaucrats and say, we don't think this is a good idea, we don't want to do this, so we are going to ankle tap it by making it so incredibly vulnerable to spoofing that it won't be any use to anybody. I think that's maybe what they've done. So the FAA may be our biggest ally in this. Whether they're not going to say it, of course, they're not going to disclose that because that would make them look bad. But oh my goodness, we never saw this coming despite the many, many pages of submissions that quite clearly warned them. <laughs> Either that or they're totally stupid. But I would rather believe that this was perhaps something they were doing to protect our hobby, not that they are as stupid as one might otherwise think. Anyway, there you go. That's just a thought I'd catch up on that. Interesting to, to look at. I'll put a link to those pages in the description of this video. You can go and see for yourself because now we have terrorists telling you how to, or showing you how to spoof remote ID, <laughs> which I don't believe for one minute. But however, I've ordered some ESP32 things. $8 New Zealand. $8 New Zealand for a little module which will create a, a throwy spoofer. If uh, I'll keep them in stock in case I need them at some time in the future because Remote ID is coming to New Zealand and it's coming to Australia and it's coming to the UK. It's coming to wherever you are, even if you're not in America. So be prepared. Let's hope that your regulator is as mm, incompetent, 
or as hobby friendly as the FAA appears to be in this case. What do you think? Go down to the comments, tell me what you think, because I'd really like some feedback on this one. And it'll give me something to chuckle at while I finish this video. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and thanks to all the people who support me, because I couldn't do it without you. Bye for now. Drones, or even the suggestion of drones, have the potential to throw air travel into disarray. All flights in and out of Gatwick, Britain's second busiest airport, have been suspended after two drones were seen flying near the runway. 10,000 passengers have been affected, with many facing long delays. Flights have been diverted as far away as Paris and Amsterdam. Gatwick has apologised for any inconvenience, but said safety was its foremost priority. Within hours of the first reports, millions of dollars in sophisticated military-grade drone detection and counter-drone equipment was rushed to Gatwick and installed, where it kept a 24-hour-a-day vigil on drone activity, but none was ever detected. Despite this, the airport remained closed. May 2023, Gatwick was once again closed by alleged sightings of drones operating near the runway. This, despite the fact that none of the sophisticated drone detection systems could see any evidence of drones in the area. In the case of the original 2018 incident, police finally admitted that there may never have been any drones in the first place. And in this year's incident, it turns out the drones that people had sighted were nothing more than party balloons. Despite this, the travel plans of thousands were disrupted and a major international airport was closed for hours. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now!